Thank you so much for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. So in this video, we made a, an axe drift out of H13 or, as, or the Swedish equivalent, which is called Orvar. Uh, now, this is an air hardening steel, which makes it very, very tough to forge by hand. If you did see, well, I, I, there was a section where I was hitting it with a hammer against the anvil. What I did there was I was trying to straight, straighten it, but even that was incredibly hard compared to something like mild steel or 1045. So it's insanely hard to forge by hand. Uh, and therefore, I haven't even tried it until I got the press, because the press can move it somewhat easily. Now, one of the biggest uh, problems with forging a drift out of this material without the proper equipment and I, I've been talking to a lot of folks who have done it and even they have problems forging it under really big air hammers and stuff like that and I had problems forging it with my press as well is that it's very hard to get it uh, to get a good rough forge because you are going to have to grind a lot of it, or at least I had and a lot of people that I know. Some people are insanely good at doing this, but I, I just couldn't figure it out. It, there, there had to be a lot of grinding to get it where I wanted it. So this is the shape that I went for. It's, a, it's approximately five centimeters in the length and two centimeters on the width at the, the top position, which is how I like my axis, basically. Uh, and it tapers down to, I don't know, half of, uh, not even half of that, but maybe two and a half centimeters length and one centimeters wide, so that you get this hourglass effect when you put it in from both sides. And that's what you need when you are making an axe. Uh, you go in both ways. Uh, a drift is very good for that, a handheld drift. I also made a couple of drifts for the press so that I can drift the eye and then move on to the finish it, fi finishing it off with the hand drift. And the hand drift is also a very good tool, especially if you have a handle. So when you put the, when you, when you put the axe in, you can then look for straightness. Well, if your drift is straight. So if your drift is straight, you can see if the axe is going to hang straight as well or if the eye is straight, basically. Now, uh, I did have a drift, my old drift and my new drift. They are very much the same. They look very much alike. The old drift is made out of uh, spring steel and it, it has been working great uh, ever, ever until I got the press because the force of the press, the, the spring steel can't handle. So it bent. It's, it's not much, but it bent a little bit. And yeah, it's just gonna be get more abuse under the press. So I wanted something that could withstand the force of the press. And then H30, which is a hot working tool steel, is a great uh, steel for that. Now, I don't make these and sell, but I know some people that do, and you can look them up. Uh, it was the most hard steel that I've ever tried to work with and uh, so yeah, uh, you can try forging it by hand but um, if you don't have a, a power hammer or a, a press, but I wouldn't recommend it. it. It would be wiser to buy one if you can find something. Um, so yeah, uh, insanely good steel to, to use and as for the air hardening, uh, so what, what I tried to do was I tried to normalize it somewhat. Uh, how effective was that? I don't know. I haven't tried it that much, but I did try to normalize it and just letting it cool down very, very slowly. And then I took to the grinder and I, I got to tell you, I don't know how many grinder belts I got through because uh, it eats the grinder belts very much because it's so hard. Uh, when I bought this deal, uh, he even told me, don't use a bandsaw trying to cut this. It's got, not going to work. It's too hard for a bandsaw. So, so that, that, that would probably give you an idea of how hard this steel is. So, and and the, the pros of this is that when you are using it inside the axe and uh, you're forging around the eye, uh, the drift might get hot, red hot sometimes even, but that won't affect this. So just take the axe out and let it air, air 
cool again and it's hard again. So that's how it works in, 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 um, compared to, for example, a mild uh, or um, a spring steel drift that if it gets red hot, it's uh, gonna lose its hardness somewhat and be more inclined to bending, which this one has done a lot. And also using the press uh, for the, the smaller drifts that I have, when you drift them in, uh, it soaks up the heat from the billet so fast that it's gonna mushroom and get stuck. And I have a lot of examples of that, as you can see here. Yeah, it's stuck. And uh, that happens if you're not careful. Now you can work around that and just do minor, just push it in a little bit, take it out, push it in a little, little bit, and you can do that. But if you want to up your production, you want to be able to go right through it and begin forging. And H13 or Orvar steel is gonna be good for that. It won't be affected as easily as other types of steel. So, um, I'm very happy with the drift and I'm gonna be using that as my main drift from now on and uh, I hope that uh, you can be able to forge something like this yourself. Now, if you don't have a press or a power hammer, to, uh, you can make a drift out of, out of um, uh, spring steel or even mild steel I've seen some people use, if you know what you're doing. I know that Joey van der Steeg has a video where he makes a uh, drift out of rebar he has a point in that because he tells you that if you know what you're doing it won't be a problem having it out of mild steel because if you don't let it heat up too much and you hit it the right ways and keep it in at a certain time and you know what you're doing it won't affect it but you wouldn't be able to use that under the power hammer or the press so uh, if you want just uh, if you are working by hand and are interested in making access you can make one out of mild steel however you will be able to you will have to address the where you hit it sometimes because it will mushroom like this and sometimes it will bend probably if you're hitting very hard or with the striker so but if you know what you're doing uh, it's a perfectly good uh, good drift to start with I have my first drift somewhere here and I, I used that for over a year and it wasn't a problem but then again I didn't have the machines back then either I was just hitting by hand so if you are using machines consider using H13 but if you are doing it by hand this, uh, this type of material will you, be good as well so for, for the first drift I used an old car um, leaf spring uh, I had no idea what properties it was, I just had a, an idea that I would probably be able to harden it. However, the hard, hard, hardness wouldn't stay in too long because it will get red hot sometimes eventually. But then again, uh, co uh, unhardened spring steel tends to be harder than yellow mild steel. So, uh, but, but you have to be careful because it will get hot and you need to know when to stop drifting and when to stop forging with the drift in and so on. But that's something that you will learn uh, probably by trying, trial and error. Uh, so it won't be a problem if you do it sometimes. So yeah, that's basically it. I really hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on Patreon nowadays, but only if you really want to. Consider subscribing if you haven't done that yet. And if you like the video, uh, you can like the video. And if you have any questions or suggestions for the future, you can leave a comment in the comment section down below. And have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.